the um, questions to us in the Q&A after. Yes, so I can find a sim familiar face. Professor Nivedita is already joined in. Hi, good evening, Professor. How are you? You are muted, Nivedita. Please unmute yourself. Yeah, now, now I guess I'm audible. Yeah. Yes, you are very much audible and uh, welcome with you. I have Professor Gandok also now. I think uh, Professor Gandok and Nivedita kept the time management into consideration and dot 630, they were here. Okay. So I have Chris. Actually, I was trying the other link that's given in the no, Facebook page, but it was for the students, I guess. So <laughs> I was redirected to our you know, registration page and all. Okay. I was betting them, yeah. So, uh, the the best part is uh, for all the speakers, especially Professor Pavan Gandok is on the screen everywhere it is appearing Professor Tesh Pavan Gandok. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so anyways, I think we are dot on time. I formally welcome uh, all four of you, Chris, Bree, Professor Gandok and Professor Nivedita for today's session. I, on behalf of the university at JGBS, formally welcome you and all our guests, students, their parents, and any of the counselors who are attending and listening to us for this important session. We hope to share our insights with all oh, of you. Sorry, Vikram, I think we haven't started yet. Uh, Vikram, can you please ask uh, Shubham to start the webinar because I've made him the host now. I did start it. It popped up to me. I did start the webinar at my end. Shubham, can Shubham uh, confirm this for us? Confirm. The webinar is live now. Okay, so let me just again, since it's live, <clears throat> a very good evening to all present out here and my fellow colleagues from Deakin and JGBS. I formally welcome you all on behalf of Jindal Global Business School for this inspiring session where I expect my attendees to have an informative talk about what exactly business analytics is from the professors at both the places. And dear students, it's an immense pleasure to have you with us. We would be having some school counselors also who would be joining us. The essence of this session is sharing of information, which is very important for you because this session is for you. And you are free to ask us questions because my friends Chris and Bree have joined us and Professor Gandok from Australia and it is midnight over there what they had just now told me. It is almost <laughs> 12 or 1 o'clock in the night. So you can just imagine that we as academicians, how much we care for you because we believe information is a key to success. You are our future brand ambassadors. The moment you decide to make analytics as your career, I feel as the director of admissions, it is my utmost responsibility to help you understand what analytics is. You all would have heard it as a terminology, but listening it from the academicians who are going to teach you at JGBS and at Deakin University, if you are our student, would help you conceptualize the program. So not taking much of the time, I welcome Dr. Chris, Professor Bree, Professor Gandok, and Professor Nivedita for today's session. And I would request now Professor Gandok to please take it from here and let's keep the session rocking. Thank you. Thank you, Vikram. It's an absolute pleasure and a big, big uh, warm welcome to our uh, Deakin colleagues um, who have been staying up till midnight. It was easy for me, Bree and Christian, because I was watching my beloved doggies 
thrash the back tires. So the adrenaline rush kept me going. <laughs> Sorry, that's just a local local uh, football team joke here with our football season's just started. Uh, so a big warm welcome to you and um, also to my colleague, uh, Professor Nivedit Haldar, who for some reason is showing up as Dr. Tejbal and Kanduk. But I assure you, I assure you, we have not cloned uh, and she is herself. So I would request, uh, perhaps, uh, I think the flow is if I could request uh, Professor Nivedit Haldar to uh, give an overview of to students and our, our audience of what the first uh, you know, two years at JGU would feel like, and then I'll request uh, our deacon colleagues to uh, to talk about the, the the remaining two years, the next two years, uh, what they would feel like at deacon. So over to you, Professor. And also, before we start, I would just request all of our attendees if you could keep popping questions in the Q and A and chat. So you know, keep parking them up there so we can get a sense of uh, you know what sorts of issues you want to cover, and we'll we'll try and uh, feed those to our speakers. Go ahead, go ahead, Professor Nivedita. Yeah, thanks. Thanks very much, Professor Gandok. So welcome all again. So on behalf of JGBS, I'm here to tell you about the first two years that you can choose a BBA Business Analytics here to what you are going to experience so far in the, here in our university. See, the, uh, before starting, let me first tell you that this course is a tailor-made course for the analytics, future analytics professionals, right? And, and, and you can expect that this course is not, will be you know, equal to a course which is fully technical, like BCA, like you have BSC IT, you have B computer science, you have BTEC IT or computer science, or even you have BSC IT, BCA, this kind of courses. So let me first tell you, so these kind of te technical courses like B, BTEC, BSc, and BCA, these are very much te technology oriented. So their first year really starts from head on with the programming, with the networking and the computer technologies and all the computer glossaries all about. So they start with first year with that. But since this is BBA business analytics, so that is, we have to give stress on the business education first, okay? Then we can move on to the analytics domain. So the objective of the curriculum is like that. First, you will be accustomed with all the business fundamentals, and then you can switch over to the analytics domain, okay? Slowly, so we'll take you slowly, so don't be afraid if you are not accustomed with the computer technologies, if you're not accustomed with the programming at first. So we'll assume that uh, we will start from a very scratch. So the first year BBA course, a business analytics course will be at par with our regular BBA semester one, okay? So we have this kind of courses so let me tell you, in JGBS, each semester will of 21 credits. So one course is having three credits, so you can expect seven courses, three sevens are 21. So what are the seven courses in the semester one that you are going to learn? This is critical thinking and analysis. Then we have quantitative methods for business one. First part, so quantitative method is a very vast uh, subject com containing math, stats, essentials of everything. So we divide it into two halves, okay? The part one will be covered in the semester one and the part two in the semester two. Then, then you will be equipped with the knowledge of basic knowledge of history of business and philosophy of business. That is, then you will be learning understanding human behavior. This is not exactly psychology, but the part of psychology which are relevant to the business education. Then you will have principles of management, then consumer farms and markets. This is basically microeconomic course, but again, tailor made for two. It's not a, like the economics on a students will learn microeconomics. You are the business management student. So we want you to um, equip you with the knowledge of the microeconomics, which is the application part of this business. Okay, application of microeconomics to the business domain. And then you will have introduction to 
accounting. And then in the semester two, we'll have the communication course because communication is very, very important for any business analyst. Okay, so we'll have written analysis and communication. Then we have introduction to spreadsheets. Um, basically, we'll start with MS Excel. And then we have business and government. Why is this course? Because you know, you cannot do a lot of business in a country because there's uh, some government working up above you so you have to be uh, you have to know about the government policies and all about regarding the business scenario and then again we have quantitative methods that's part one covered in the semester one part two will be covered in the semester two then we have social environment for business again a sociology course tailor made for the business professionals and then after that we'll have economics of growth money and globalization this is basically a macroeconomic course Again, not, we'll not stress on the more theoretical part, but we'll stress on the application of part of the macroeconomics to the business. And then we'll have environmental management. This is the first two years, sorry, first two semester of the sem year one. Then in the second year, in the semester three, you will be learning verbal analytical and uh, communications. Then introduction to accounting two, because again, accounting is a very vast syllabus. So we won't be able to cover it in one semester. And then you will next in the semester three, now you will be going to introduce to the core courses of the business management. Okay, that is introduction to finance, marketing, then Indian economy, then organizational behavior. Also, you will have advanced spreadsheet modeling. This advanced spreadsheet modeling, this course is typically for these BBA business analytics students. We do not teach this course to normal BBA students. Normal BBA students are, are, are learning the, the basics of spreadsheet modeling, but here, because you, are, you will be into the analytics domain, we want you to know all the advanced feature functions, macros, et cetera, of a Microsoft Excel solver, data analytics tool, but, there are so many things, okay, apart from the basic uh, working of the Excel. So we want you to learn all these advanced uh, features of the MS Excel. So that is why this course, Advanced Spreadsheet Modeling. Next in the semester four, we'll have Managing People. This is HR, actually HRM course, Human Resource Management. Then uh, there will be Introduction to Programming because you will be in analytics domain, you should know a little bit of programming, though you will be not be uh, learning programming like a BCA or BBTech student does, but you should have the knowledge of uh, how a program runs in the background of a software, right? And you will be uh, knowing introduction to operations management, and then of course, business ethics, Ethical Foundation of the Business and CSR, Corporate Social Responsibility. This is very, very important because as you know, that is now mandatory for each and every firm to you know, spend certain percentage of their revenue for the social causes. So each and every company has the CSR wing. So you have to know about this CSR thing. And then management of information technology and business, how a MIS system works in an corporate that you have to know. And then we have a course, very interesting course. This is design thinking. And then one course is floated for you. That is introduction to analytics. So in that course, you will be uh, given the overview of various analytics tool. So this is all about for our first two years. Yes. Yes, Pawan, over to you. Much, uh, thank you so much, uh, Professor Timit. Uh, really appreciate that. And I think that sets the context very well. Uh, yeah. After having done the first two years at JGBS, uh, at JGU, uh, you know, then I'll, uh, uh, we can then uh, request Dr. Christian yeah. to talk about the next two years, how that will unfold at Deakin. Of course, if there are some Q&A about students want to ask about, you know, in the odd situation that if they can't proceed for the two years at Deakin, what happens about the third year at JGBS? We can come back to that in Q&A, Professor Navedita. But yeah, I'll now request uh, Dr. Christian to talk about 
what the next two years of Deakin would look and feel like. Yeah. Go ahead. Right. Thank you. Um, so hopefully you all can see uh, my slides now. Yep. So uh, my name is Krista Jan um, and I'm the um, course director for Bachelors of Business Analytics here at Deakin Business School. So first of all, um, I would like to set up the stage uh, for why um, business analytics is important relative to other traditional um, occupations. Um, as a parent myself as well, you know, and, and um, I know that uh, Indian parents have great influence on, on Indian students about what career they should pursue. So I think it's very important to sort of break it down um, uh, and, and, and for them to understand why it's, um, it's an emerging career um, that they can consider uh, for, the, for, their, uh, for the children. So um, we all nowadays hear about this term big data. So what does big data mean? Uh, big data is um, everywhere, okay? It's on, um, it's, it's uh, uh, social media is part of big data. Um, uh, then uh, uh, YouTube, uh, YouTube comments, product reviews, um, pictures, uh, videos, um, then also more structured information such as um, uh, whenever you purchase something with your credit card, that's a, um, that's a data, okay? So all of this, I would say unstructured data, which would be the social media data or the user generated data, um, and then uh, the structured data, both of them, when you put them together, they represent this um, a set of, of, of big data. So um, big data is getting bigger and bigger and IBM estimates that daily um, we create around 2.5 quadrillion bytes of data. So even though um, just by using our cell phones on a daily basis, we do generate a lot of data that is potentially available to organizations to, um, uh, to, to make sense of. And this will add up to around 40 zettabytes, uh, or to put it into perspective, to uh, 43 uh, trillion gigabytes by uh, 2020, by last year. And this is just the beginning. And so that means that we live in a society which is washed with data. There's so much data out there, and organizations and corporations want to make sense of this data. So as I said, they, they want, um, um, as someone uh, with... Um, computational, analytical, and business skills to sort of look at this um, the data sets and, and uh, both the structured and the unstructured data and uh, try to find a way how to marry this one so that uh, organizations can, can get a better insights about maybe what uh, customers like, uh, what customers dislike, uh, what are their spending patterns, um, uh, what kind of preferences they have for products and so on, just so that they can um, uh, better understand the customers or the customer behavior so they can serve uh, customers better. So um, uh, yes, uh, uh, business analytics has a big uh, role in uh, today's uh, uh, data-driven society in which we have a um, large amount of um, data. So um, this is just a uh, another uh, sort of conceptual slide uh, for me uh, to demonstrate to you what is big data. Uh, in, uh, big data, as I said, uh, it, it differentiates from other types of data or other data sets uh, uh, just by looking at these four characteristics. So we can look at the volume of, um, uh, of data, meaning, uh, you know, we do produce lots and I just gave you a number about 40 zettabytes. Um, um, on a uh, daily basis. So we produce a lot of um, amount of data, you know, through our uh, smart TVs, through our cell phones, through our computers, uh, by using apps um, and, and so on. Um, then a variety of data. So this data, as I said, it can be both structured and unstructured. Um, uh, the unstructured data, or uh, this is the social media data, which can be, you know, in a form of a comment, it can be in a form of a picture, in a form of a video, in a form of an uh, infographic, and, and so on. So we, you, uh, you know, um, as someone maybe perhaps working in business analytics, has to sort of um, assign a meaning to to anything 
to to the picture, to to the like, to the uh, dislikes, and, and everything, um, especially on social media. Um, then um, the velocity uh, with which this data is created. So, um, in you know, just because uh, um, uh, there's so much data that you can feed into um, to to any um, analytics tools. Uh, nowadays is even uh, possible to achieve a, a near real time sort of uh, processing of, of let's say social media data so uh, and and what is important here that maybe uh, just because uh, this data is being produced with, with 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 large velocity that means that maybe one piece of data is uh, relevant now but maybe a couple of hours later on, it's not relevant, doesn't have any use. And also the last one is the veracity, is the uncertainty of, um, of data. Um, so even though um, data is useful, um, but sometimes there are other factors that don't really, um, uh, we can't really account that, we can't really put number and quantify on any fact, on, on all the possible factors that need to be taken into consideration to make a, a, the right decision. Um, so in particular, the joint program between uh, the uh, uh, G, uh, GU and uh, Deakin uh, BBA Honors, which is focused on uh, business um, analytics, is uh, uh, 15 uh, core units. Um, and this will be at Deakin. So you have 15 core units and plus one elective units and in total 16 credit points. Um, some of the admission requirements are that the first two years uh, need to be completed uh, in the um, uh, OP uh, Jindal Global University. Um, and um, I think uh, one of my colleagues from there did elaborate on what kind of units you're going to be looking at and working there. Uh, and then um, uh, you will also need to meet the one requirements for Deakin, meaning you need to achieve certain GPA um, uh, to be eligible to do this um, other two years at Deakin. Um, also, you need to have an IELTS score, an overall IELTS score of um, six, uh, uh, with no band less than six or equivalent. Um, and um, also, there's some other requirements that you could, um, and we can, I think, share um, this um, link to the uh, Deakin webpage where you have the most updated information um, about the course and as well uh, the admin requirements for this. Um, for these two years and Deakin. So these are the units that you're gonna be doing at uh, Deakin over those uh, two years. Um, and um, I would say uh, they are um, largely focused on, uh, on business analytics and as well information systems. So for instance, you can see uh, in, uh, you're going to be doing units such as data science concepts and this uh, uh, unit is taught uh, uh, in a collaboration with our uh, school of IT at uh, Deakin University and it's uh, more of a technical uh, uh, unit where uh, uh, students will be taught how to um, uh, do some programming in R. So as um, one of the colleagues uh, 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 of uh, mentioned that technical knowledge is necessary. I also want to stress and uh, reinforce that point that um, knowing R and Python is a must in your CV if you want to do business analytics. So that's what we, we're going to teach you as well here. So um, data science concepts concept is about um, uh, teaching you how to code and, and write codes in R. Um, then you have business uh, requirements um, analysis. This is more about soliciting requirements from the business users and then passing them uh, to the um, uh, developers or people that will build the software. Then you have managing data and information. This is um, uh, a unit where you're going to be uh, taught how to use uh, Power BI, uh, which is uh, a good analytic tool uh, that can um, help you and give you some descriptive analytics capabilities, such as drill down, drill up, and some basic visualizes. Um, then um, you have, uh, for instance, uh, ethics, uh, and this is ethics uh, in particular focus on analytics, and this is of a great importance uh, because um, you know what happened with Cambridge Analytica. Uh, so it's it's very important about uh, that that students are aware of how um, how do you manage data, okay, uh, and and how do you make use of it, and how do you responsibly make uh, use of um, data. 
Um, then you have information security governance and cloud. This unit is more focused on the cloud and uh, uh, what can, how can cloud offer um, sort of competitive advantage to uh, businesses. Then you have a BI or business intelligence and data warehousing. Again, here you're gonna be doing uh, uh, or learning how to use uh, Power BI uh, and as well some concepts about um, uh, data warehousing. Uh, then uh, you get to uh, predictive analytics. And uh, this is the um, uh, unit where you're gonna be using uh, uh, a rapid miner, and this is another predictive analytics tool where you're going to be running predictive models, uh, models based on probability, and you're going to try to predict uh, what will happen in the future based on um, uh, past data. Okay, then you have decision analytics in which you're going to use some advanced uh, software packages for um, Excel, and you're going to be running optimization models. So, this is um, uh, analytics which is more applicable to, um, I would say, manufacturing. Uh, and, and logistics sector. Then you have social media analytics and data-driven innovation. This is my unit and I teach this unit. In this unit, we teach you um, some coding in Python, but we're gonna do it uh, on a gentle, in a gentle environment, meaning we, uh, you're gonna be doing the coding on a, um, uh, on a Jupyter. Um, that's how this platform is called. Um, and also Google, uh, uh, Google Collab, uh, in order to, uh, to, to, to run some Python codes. Um, and what we're gonna teach you in this is to crawl data from social media sites and then make sense of it. Um, meaning uh, we're gonna uh, teach you how to crawl data for iPhone and then look at what features of the iPhone uh, 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 certain customers like and what features they don't like. And then at the end, based on, on, on this analysis, you will have to propose how does the new iPhone have to look like? What kind of features it, the new iPhone should have? Then you have uh, strategic supply chain management where you're gonna be running some analytics uh, uh, in particular for uh, the optimization of suppliers. Um, then you have marketing analytics where you're gonna be running some models in um, Excel. Again, uh, advanced analytics packages for Excel uh, where you're gonna be running some models uh, uh, in order to figure out what is the optimal features for, for a particular product uh, from a marketing perspective, of course. Then you have a project management. You'll be taught how to use Jira uh, and uh, how to manage uh, projects and, and involve all the key stakeholders. Then you have uh, the applied business project, which is a capstone. And in this uh, unit, uh, we'll have uh, clients from the industry coming and giving you data sets uh, uh, to work with. For instance, this year, we had a law firm uh, which came uh, as a client and they gave a data set, a customer data set uh, from the past 10 years. And they've asked the students to analyze this data and uh, come up with some insights and at the end, some valuable recommendations about which customers are profitable, which ones are not profitable, and whether they've discovered some sort of behavioral patterns in, in their customers. Um, then you have AI for business. Um, this is uh, another unit um, which is taught by my colleague, um, Juan, uh, and in this unit, you're going to be doing similar thing that I did uh, to uh, uh, social media analytics, and you're going to be doing uh, Python coding uh, and, and crawling some data and then analyzing the data and making business decisions. Um, and for uh, this unit, you're going to be using Microsoft Azure, which is another um, analytics tool. Um, then you have the work integrated learning unit. Uh, this is um, something like an internship that you all have to take as well uh, during the course, uh, during this two years at Deakin. And last but not the least is one elective from Deakin Business School. And this can be from um, information systems or um, analytics or uh, the other departments in Deakin Business School, such as management, marketing, finance and accounting and so on. So why uh, our bachelors of business analytics is um, uh, uh, and Deakin is, is better than the others. Um, we do uh, have a, a very advanced analytics core, meaning we do teach you analytics uh, in very different flavors. So for instance, we teach you marketing analytics, we teach you decision analytics, we teach you social media analytics, um, uh, and uh, that makes it, whenever you look at the other, what other universities are offering, uh, they don't offer this much specialization. And in particular, we want to, um, uh, to sort of 
uh, teach you all these different tools uh, because out there there's a lot of analytics tools and um, maybe after we you know after you finish this course there's going to be always new tools coming out but we'll give you the sort of skill set of r and python and, and some other ones um, that you could use but as well we'll teach you how to build up on that okay and how to um, um, sort of um, self-taught any new things um, uh, and any new methodologies or any new sort of um, uh, tools that are coming. How can you sort of pick up this tool um, as well? Um, so uh, we are the first bachelors of business analytics in Victoria. Um, and I would like to say that we are the one, um, the one that offers the most specialization. We have an advanced analytics core, meaning we teach you analytics in many different flavors, which also gives you an edge in terms of having a versatile career. Meaning, um, you know, if if you if you know uh, decision analytics, uh, that means you can apply it in manufacturing or supply chain. So that means you can start in the transportation um, uh, sector. Uh, then uh, predictive analytics is applicable for uh, for all of the sectors, uh, but especially for energy and health. Um, and then uh, we also teach marketing analytics, which is also applicable to others, and and social me uh, social media analytics, which is uh, you know uh, applicable to any company that has a social media presence. And currently in Australia, uh, the um, um, there's there's more demand than um, actual supply of fresh graduates, undergraduates for this course. So definitely you're on the right track in a market that is I would say healthy. And we've developed this unit together with our industry advisory board, and we have people from PwC, BP, Origin Energy, which is one of the biggest energy uh, um, uh, distributor here in Victoria and I think in um, Australia. Um, and they use a lot of analysis, so they do give us an um, sort of um, advice on how our courses should look like, how our unit should look like, what kind of tools we should teach the students, and so on. So this is why our uh, course um, at Deakin is better than the others. Then in terms of career outcomes, once you graduate and get your two um, diplomas, what can you do with, with these two diplomas? So um, definitely you can do something like um, a data analyst or a system analyst um, uh, doing something with a business um, intelligence or a business analytics, um, um, uh, doing marketing research, uh, uh, consumer analytics, um, um, they are all of these tools that we teach you as well, um, optimizations and um, as well predictive analytics is um, also um, applicable to the stock market uh, uh, sector or uh, uh, the financial and as well the accounting sector. So you can work there as well on, on stock market analysis and as well financial and credit risk management too. Um, so these are just numbers that we've pulled from uh, some of uh, from Seek, which is one of the uh, largest, um, uh, I would say, uh, job seeking sites in Australia. And as you can see, um, uh, these are the traditional roles that you would have after um, if, if you graduate from uh, uh, and get a certificate or, or get a diploma in, uh, in business analytics. So you're going to be working as a business analyst. Um, so the salary. Uh, the most common salary uh, for a fresh graduate is around uh, 110k, and there's been a 20% uh, increase in this in, over the past uh, uh, year, and that's because of COVID-19. So actually, uh, uh, business analytics is not um, uh, negatively affected by COVID-19, but um, uh, on the opposite, there's more job created uh, because um, it's more flexible. You can. Uh, you can work from home uh, uh, as long as you have a good setup at home with good uh, desktop computer or a laptop or a power with a powerful CPU. You can work from home. You can do all the job from home. Um, then um, uh, business analyst uh, is, is one of the roles that you can get. Then you have data analyst, which is more on the data side. Um, again, there's a, a increase in 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 the job growth. Uh, over the past year and again being positively affected by COVID-19 uh, an initial I would say a starting salary for graduate uh, doing a, a data analyst roles would be around 110k a year then you also have a system analyst which is less common uh, than uh, this too but still 
uh, uh, with this diploma, you can get this kind of um, um, job. And again, uh, it is uh, around uh, 110K uh, a year. So, um, and this is data that we got uh, just this month from uh, Seek. Now, um, another thing uh, that I want to point out is that for our capstone, we do have um, partners, uh, meaning for uh, the capstone was the um, uh, was the unit in which we have a client giving you a real um, a real life problem to work on. And in the past, we've had people from PwC, from BP, World Vision, and Edward Healthcare, for instance. This year, I told you, we had the case of a law firm giving us data set. Uh, previously, we had a, a, um, a company in a hospital giving us data set from their emergency department and asking the students to sort of analyze this data using all of the tools that we taught them and, and try to understand why there are spikes um, in demand in certain days. Um, then the tools that we're gonna teach you um, are, and we're gonna teach you Rapid Miner, Tableau, uh, um, Microsoft Azure, uh, Google uh, Colab, um, uh, Jupyter, um, R, and Python as well. Um, and then um, industry professionals, um, uh, you also have uh, people from the industry coming and giving lectures uh, uh, on um, what is happening out there and how is the, um, uh, the job market looking like. And as well, um, uh, as part of, um, of Bachelors of Business Analytics, I like to always organize at least once a year sessions in which uh, uh, new cutting edge analytics tools are presented. For instance, last year we had a presentation about Click, which is uh, um, uh, another uh, emerging um, analytics tools and it's good for descriptive analytics and as well ThoughtSpot, which is a, a new one. Um, and it's, a, it's an analytics tool which uses um, sort of natural language to, to answer queries of, 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 of the business users. Um, and uh, last but not the least, um, this is um, accredited by the Australian Computer Society, which I think also gives some um, uh, sort of a point towards uh, uh, students that would like to remain here in Australia um, and would like to gain uh, uh, residency. So this gives you some points towards that. So that would be all from my side. And I think I'm, I'm open to any questions um, um, that um, I can try to answer for you guys, in particular about what does business analytics entail uh, or um, uh, how does business analytics uh, differ from, uh, uh, from uh, data science and, and, and so on. So yeah. Um, I'm, Thank I'm you. more than happy to answer questions, yes. Thank you, Dr. Christian. Um, uh, be great if, uh, if we could get some show of hands or uh, Q&A, if any of the uh, attendees would like to ask Dr. Christian a question, if you could please uh, speak out. We'll also have some room at the back end for Q&A after Ms. Bree as well, but if you have some specific questions right now, please, please feel free. No, a bit shy. Why don't we, uh, in the interest of flow, keep going. Let's go to Miss Bree. And uh, after that, we'll have some you know, room for q and I, I did notice that it was great. I saw two questions already in the q and I encourage all of the attendees for uh, you know, to look through the Q&A. A couple of questions have already been answered. But also, please keep popping in more of your questions there, because they'll help us uh, plan the uh, you know the the Q and A the Q and A discussions uh, pretty soon after, but uh, with that context you now have of Professor Devedita giving you a sense of what the first two years at JGU would look like, and Dr. Christian Christian talking about what the the two years at Deakin would look like. He's also given you a very good overview of the sort of job opportunities and the kind of uh, very interesting uh, you know uh, job uh, job sort of prospects within the Australian context. Let me ask uh, Bree to talk a little bit about student life uh, and also please address whether people get to be at the Burwood campus or you know the, the, the gorgeous Geelong waterfront campus or whatever have you as part of that. Thank you. Don't oversell Geelong because they're going to build. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> thank you so much. First of all, I just want to thank um, 
the um, Jindal Global Business School for having us. And we're so excited for this partnership. And we really think that students coming with both of coming out with both of these degrees, this was one of the questions that was asked. So students actually get two degrees, um, the BBA honours from OP Jindal. And then you're going to graduate also with a um, Bachelor of Business Analytics from Deakin Business School. So you're going to do um, two years at each and you'll graduate with two different bachelor degrees, which is we're so excited to be able to launch this and um, have so much interest already. So I'll keep going. Um, again, at the end, we'll have some questions, but I've always got to start with the Australia, the cute, cuddly kangaroos and koalas, and of course the famous MCGs there. Most of you would know this from the epic cricket matches that we have between Australia and India, but I'm sure Professor Ganduk is more interested in whether his beloved doggies are going to make it to the final deep in <laughs> September. Um, I'm, a, I'm a cricket tragic actually. Ah, <laughs> uh, so, so both, so both. <laughs> Hopefully you'll still be here then. Um, so look, Australia is a really, really friendly and safe place to live and study. So that's really important for both students and of course the parents to know that we're going to take really good care of your children when you do bring them over to Australia. We've got excellent um, care within Australia and Deakin itself. Um, we do have a pretty big population within Melbourne. We're sort of on par with Sydney as one of the largest in Australia. And we've been one of the world's most livable cities for a number of years now. Um, as I mentioned, there's always something to do, sport, multicultural festivals. Our students love getting out and about and exploring Melbourne. There's always so much on offer. Everyone's always wondering why Deakin, why would I send my student over to Australia to study at Deakin? So you can see here just a few of our um, key, key uh, indicators that are really important to Deakin, but you can see here how highly we're ranked. So we're in that top 1% of universities globally. We are still a relatively young university because we're under 50 and we are ranked in the top 50 worldwide for that. Um, I'll come back to some of the other areas later in the in um, what I'm presenting but one of the other real things here is the number one student satisfaction so ultimately we want our students to be having the best experience while they're studying with us and this is a ranking that our students vote on so um, they they have listed us as number one for quite a number of years now so you know that you're going to get that exceptional support when you do come and study with us in Deakin. So where is Deakin and um, so we are down in Australia we are down in the state of Victoria and then we are based in Melbourne. So we have five different campuses at Deakin. Um, you've just heard about our beautiful Geelong campus, but this, this course is offered at our Melbourne Burwood campus. And that's the closest one to the Melbourne CBD, which is always really popular with our students in India, in particular those coming from the Delhi region because it is a more populous sort of area. Um, and you can see here a little bit of our campus that's there, but we've got exceptional facilities here as well. And Melbourne is the one that's been voted the world's most livable city. A few things about Deakin Business School. So we're, we're the business school that sits within the university. You can see some of our rankings there. One of the biggest things that we are known for at Deakin is our sport programs and, of course, our analytics, which don't sit within these rankings because um, rankings are always measured on different things. But here's some of the key indicators of the business school to see how the quality sits within that and where we sit within all of the global rankings. And then, of course, the international accreditation. This is so important when you're looking overseas at business schools. Um, not many business schools in the world. You can see there that there's less than 5%. So I think there's about 170 globally, roughly, um, have both ACSB and Equus, 170 business schools worldwide, and there's thousands of them. So it puts us in a pretty good position for any degree that a student comes to take with us. And what it's gonna mean for students who graduate from this particular program is they're gonna have a degree from India, a degree from Australia, and also their business degree is gonna be recognized by a European and an American accrediting body. So they're truly gonna be global graduates. And whilst these accreditations may not be particular for particularly familiar with you at the moment, the big firms that a lot of our students want to go and work in, your KPMGs, your Deloitte's and these types of people who have dedicated recruiters to graduate programs, they're familiar with these and the weight that they hold within the, within the world. So you can be rest assured that wherever your son, daughter or yourself, if it's our students joining us today, you're going to be able to take your degrees anywhere in the world with real confidence that they'll be recognised. 
So we've got a heap of different facilities at Deakin. Um, this is one of the ones in our business school. We've got this incredible training room. So um, Chris mentioned that we do have an elective within this course. If learning about investment and stocks is something that does interest you, you can always take this unit. But um, we do have a number of different facilities around the campus as well. So do, do have a look out in the different areas that you're interested in and you can use that elective that you've got to explore something a little bit different even outside of the analytics world. Mm -hmm. We've got um, accommodation on campus. This is always one of the biggest questions that we get asked. So we actually have it physically on our campus. We've got a brand new accommodation building that's just um, gone up. Hundreds and hundreds of spots available for our students. So if students want to come and start on campus, we normally recommend that for our bachelor students, make a heap of good friends, get some socializing skills and participate in heaps of different events. But there is also the opportunity to be off campus. So perhaps you have a relative or a friend in Melbourne, or maybe you're going as a group. If you're coming as a group over, you might want to grab a share house together. That's also an opportunity for you. We at Deakin will help you with any of your choices and also help you in understanding if you decide to live off campus, how do you get to campus, we'll support you in all of that. So um, don't be alarmed. If we've got any parents on the line, the on-campus does have 24-hour security, which is just a nice added bonus feature um, and reception available for you guys as well and also they do some really fun activities like your child may never have cooked before I know I'm not a great cook so they can go in work with some of the other students that are there to learn some of those sort of skills have movie nights all those types of things that make it a little bit more fun and make it a real uni um, campus sort of experience. So um, Chris has talked about learning AI, but I guess what I want to show you is that Deacon really lives and breathes it. We don't, we don't just teach it, we also implement it for our students to be able to use it. Deacon Genie is something that we're really proud of. It's an um, artificial intelligence app. For any of you have, who have iPhones, it's like a Siri, but it's a personalised Siri for you to use while you're at Deakin. So this will have all of your classes, your assessment, all different things individualised to you that you can use to help you to be a better student as well as Deacon Sync. So that's your personalised platform that you come into, um, is all individualised to your study areas. So we make a really big investment in these areas and really supports what we're teaching. Student support's so important to know that they're going to be supported throughout their time. You can see that we also want them to have a bit of fun. So we have heaps of social clubs and societies that they can join. There's hundreds of these. You name something and it's likely that we've got a club for it. Um, students who are interested in sport, there's sport absolutely on campus, but also in Australia, we have a lot of local clubs that you can join easily. And it can be, you can be at a national level or you can just really do it for a social aspect so we have all types of levels for you to join in clubs like that but then of course we come to the more serious uh, academic skills so we've got a lot of mentoring opportunities for students to develop their skills so if you are finding something a little bit difficult you don't need to suffer through this alone we have heaps of opportunities for you to join different um, sessions and get some academic support as well. And it's really nice to know that we've got employment assistance, medical centres and also some multi-faith chaplains. So really within the campus, students can um, support themselves in any way that they sort of need to. This is our mentoring program. So we have this in the business and law faculty. When students start with us, we know that they're going to have so many questions. So we team them up with someone who's studied at Deakin before. Often for our international students, we'll try to give them someone who's also an international student because they've had that same lived experience and can really help and support them on their journey with Deakin. And then the great thing is that our mentees can become mentors later in life. So these students will gain some leadership skills and some work experience as well as they go through um, their course with us. Then finally, we all wanna get a job. How do we support you in doing that? So we have um, an incredible graduate employment division at Deakin. It's called Deakin Talent. You can see here that we have been ranked number one um, for overall education experience for four years in a row now by Victoria, which is voted on by industry. But 
also really recently, just at the end of last year, the Victorian government also gave us an award for um, our support for the international students and the career development that we do with them. So this is a high priority for us and we're leading the way in this in Australia. You can see here some of the pro, pro uh, some of the programs that you can do within Deakin Talent. We have a specific stream for our international students because we know they're coming to Australia with a complete different understanding of what a workforce is. So the Indian workforce is gonna be different to the Australian. So we need to give you some context to start off with. So we'll introduce you to that. We'll have a look at your resume or you may never have written one before. So we'll help you to develop that, give you some interview skill practice, uh, career coaching, we'll also have job fairs because we don't have placement in Australia like you'd be familiar with. So we give you all of these added tools that we embed employability throughout your entire course. You do internships as part of your course. You get to go to career expos, meet employers, share your profile, understand where your skills really align with what the market's looking for. And then ideally, after you complete your degree, you go straight into employment rather than looking at um, a placement or internship post your degree. So I won't go on any further, but do feel free to check out our channels or of course get in contact with us afterwards and I'll hand back now for the Q&A session. Thank you, Brie. That was terrific. Um, and um, and uh, I actually um, would be a big votary for the Bowood campus. I, I've sort of stayed there for, for many months myself. Uh, including playing cricket for the Deacon Dugongs right, uh, right there at the Oval. Um, uh, so there was already some great Q&A already happening, uh, and I would encourage people to uh, keep going with that. Uh, but also now is a, is a good opportunity to ask questions of our panelists. Uh, just to kick, uh, kick, you know, kick things off, so I, I, I would request uh, you know our attendees to keep raising their hands up so I can I can ask them. I, I see one already, uh, and why don't we go to that straight away? And if the others uh, could also pop your hands up, it'll help us uh, manage manage that queue and 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 manage the time. So Ria Batreja, could you please go ahead and ask your question and also suggest which panelists you want to address your question to? Oh, Rhea removed her hand. <laughs> Rhea, did you still want to ask a question? Or uh, In the meantime, let me ask uh, uh, a couple of clarifying questions, uh, perhaps aimed both to uh, Professor uh, Devetha and to Dr. Christian. Um, there was this question um, raised uh, uh, about the importance, you know, how important is maths and computer science? And uh, you certainly addressed in the Q&A text, Professor Devetha, that of course, if you have maths and computer science, that's great. That will equip you well. Could you also, you know, address the components if, you know, people only have, you know, don't have both, neither math nor computer science in year 12 <laughs> or uh, one of them, uh, you know, et cetera. So if you could just also address that component. Thank you. Yeah. So for the analytics, yeah, we can understand when we are talking about analytics, Maths, not maths means people always um, very afraid of, you know, calculus. I, when I face my students, they're all afraid of, you know, trigonometry and calculus, but they, they are not very afraid of, you know, the algebra or coordinate part. So this is my general, you know, experience as a teacher, because before joining here, you must be knowing I was, my started career as my high school teacher. So I was a maths and computer teacher, by the way. So, so I can assure all, so in our analytics courses, we do not give stress on the calculus. So there's no afraid if you do not, don't be afraid if you do not have maths in 11 and 12. So in the, that is why in the very first year, we, we separated our quantitative techniques into two halves, particularly, right? So uh, we'll assume that you people do not um, know mathematics in that particular um, efficiency like uh, you know, a pure math student have. So if you do not have maths also in 11, 12, I don't think that there shouldn't be a problem because we will teach you in that manner only we'll assume that you, you know the mathematical knowledge till 10th grade and from there we'll pick you up. 
Okay, so that shouldn't be a problem. And since we are not going to give stress on the trigonometry and calculus, I don't think the people should be very worried about because we'll be doing more data churning with the, the um, statistics. So this is all about playing with the numbers, not with very much of the symbols and all. Yeah, the symbols will be there, but not to scare you because uh, always in our curriculum, we'll focus on the application part, not very theoretical parts. For example, Christian can you know, agree with me when we teach optimization, right? So optimization basically derived from the differential calculus. This is the, you know, <laughs> yeah, first optimality principle, second optimality. This is all about calculus. But when we'll teach our students, that will be with the data and of course with the MS Excel solver, or we can introduce a very easy package like Lingo, very easy to understand. Or we may have, you know, the MATLAB or Simplex. These are very, you know, friendly, user-friendly software packages, which will hide all the, you know, the technicality of the calculus. So the things will be run at the background. Students shouldn't be worried about that. So if they can play with the numbers very well and know the steps, what is this data is doing actually, whether I'm taking the decision on it, that is my objective function whether this is creating any, cons cons I mean, any limitation to me, then this is my constraints. So if a people is analytical enough to differentiate between these, which I'm going to do, which is hindering me, what is my output, intended output? If these things are clear in their head, I don't think um, you know, that should be a problem. Okay, so all the you know, complexity of the calculus will be running in behind of the software package. That is why I'm telling you this BBA business analytics is intended for the students, uh, intended to solve the real life business problems. So they will understand the business problem first, what the clients is wanting. And if you can understand, if you handle a client, client is not a mathematician, okay? He's a business person. He just understand his profit and loss, isn't it? So when you are communicating with a client, you have to talk in a layman's voice, not as a, technical guru kind of thing. So the technical part will be taken care of by the programmers later on. Your job will be to talk with the client, to understand the business problem, and then you have to translate that business problem into technical knowledge to the technical guys. We'll be the BTEC and bees, you know, sitting in your um, farm and they will be doing the solving or whatever. So whenever they will give you the solution to you, now you have those business knowledge to make it clear enough for the clients and to uh, what I say, explain that technical solution in a businessman's language. So basically, I guess the uh, what the analyst, they are like a interpreter kind of thing. Okay, so if you are interpreter, you have to know both the language, say, for, say English to French, you you should be knowing English, and you should be knowing French also. Similarly, you should be knowing business and you should be knowing the technical part also so that you can fluidly translate between business to you know technical knowledge uh, technical terminologies again you can translate that technical terminologies to the business language so this is the job of the business analytics altogether so Thank i you. guess the students are clear enough what is the basic difference between this curriculum with normal b btech and bsc it bc kind of things Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Thank you, Prof. That was, uh, that actually is a good segue for me to, yeah. uh, you know, follow up with Dr. Christian. You already addressed very beautifully in the text, uh, Dr. Christian, one of the Q&A about the difference between data science and, yes. you know, the, and, and business analysis and Professor Deveta's comments, you know, help segue into that very well. Uh, what I thought maybe if you could shed a bit of light and perspective, Dr. Christian, in addition, I think there's one of the implied questions, uh, you know, people haven't voiced it that way yet, but I think one of the implicit questions is, sure, it's flavor of the month, you know, sure, it's popular, there's lots of demand right now, but is this, you know, do you see this as a long-term trend or is this potentially, you know, some kind of fad that could be, you know, uh, rapidly superseded? In other words, uh, is this, you know, it, you know, does it make logical sense for for young people to you know pick this kind of skill as part of the undergraduate, 
or is this you know mm -hmm. some kind of component of business analytics really something that one should study or pursue later on you know and as as a postgrad or later to to wait and watch and see if the if you know if if the flavor du jour changes etc your right. thoughts yeah. on that Dr. Good. Yeah. So yes, I do agree that it's um, currently it's a very hot topic. It's a very you know, big data. It's a buzzword as well. Um, big um, uh, and business analytics and analytics in general. Um, I think that analytics is to stay for us <laughs> for a very long time. Um, Facebook and Google are not going anywhere <laughs> as far as I know on my watch. Um, and with COVID-19, they've just solidified their um they are um their, their positions as well and because of COVID-19 a lot of organizations nowadays have to go through this digital acceleration where they were sort of forced let's say in a in a month's time to sort of develop a digital twin and, and so on so um our society as I mentioned previously is washed with data and um, it, we whether we like it or not we live in a data-driven society and the people that will be able to make sense of that chaos um, you know um, uh, that data chaos would most probably be the ones that are um, um, that, that are uh, highly paid in society so I think um, it's a very promising career um, and um, it's an emerging one. It's just about to come. Um, we still haven't. We still haven't seen the the um, the the peak of this career, and I don't think it's maybe in the next ten to twenty years we will not reach the peak now. But um, it's um, it's still not getting into the into the mainstream jobs. But I would say it's comparable to all of the traditional ones. Um, for instance, if you compare it to being a doctor, you know, um, I mean, um, doctors are relatively well paid in um, Australia and as well I assume in, in India too. Um, but uh, with with the you know, with the high reward, you always get very good, um, um, a very good amount of risk. You know, if you make a couple of mistakes, you know, with, with being a doctor, you know, it can it can cost the life and putting a price on a life, uh, you know, you can't you can't do that. Um, but the ratio of a price risk with, with business analytics is pretty good. <laughs> I would say you're not you're not really risking a lot if you make um, any kind of I would say um, um, uh, a mistake. Uh, but you know, so there's not that much pressure. You know, there's, I think in every career there's a pressure and there's always pen points. But um, it's it's not as you know it's financially rewarding. I can tell you, but uh, as some of the uh, traditional jobs such as accountant lawyer and, um, and doctor uh, but you know the risks that are associated with it are not as as big as for some of the traditional jobs so um for instance i come from family and i'll, I'll be a bit more of a person yeah i come from a family of mds and i didn't become an md and i also want my daughter to be to do something with data i, I wouldn't want her to go down that path because it's a flexible job. As long as you have a laptop, you can work from anywhere. And I think the flexibility of the job has proven to be the most important, especially after COVID-19. Uh, it did draw a line between um, you know, um, the future and the past in, in terms of career. So yeah, that would be my, my personal take in, um, um, on, on, your, on your question. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Christian. Uh, by the way, there's one more question in the Q&A, and I'll just uh, you know, come to that in a moment. But I do encourage our, our attendees to please keep the questions going. Could somebody just tell me, uh, are the settings enabled in this webinar from the IT team? Uh, are our attendees able to voice out their questions, or can they only pop them in the, in the Q&A? We seem to have a couple of people with their hands up who I hope would be able to unmute. No. Excuse me. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Samyak. I'm doing right now. I'm from BBA 19. I have a couple of doubts. First of all, I'm from BBA 19, uh, BBA honor. So my course was not like how uh, Ma'am Nivedita Ma'am uh, described. So will I have the chance to come over there and do it? And the second part, right now, I'm even pursuing actual sciences. Given a couple of paper and pass. So will it uh, 
complement my actual sciences or it's something that I shouldn't pursue right now with actual sciences. Thank you so much. Okay. Yeah, actually, we updated the syllabus a little bit. It's not like uh, normal BBA. You can understand very well because we are in, intending to produce a business analyst out of there. So, uh, if you want to, uh, so if your question, if I'm not, if I'm understanding it properly, right now you are in the second year of BBA, right? 2019 batch. So second year BBA. So are you asking after the second year you want to go to Deakin and pursue that business analytics? Is isn't it? Yes, ma'am. Yes, yes ma'am. Okay, so you can choose. Uh, you can see the course structure of uh, the third year of Deakin and can see whether you can. Um, so what is the difference? The so that the differentiation course that you can come up with me and we can. Uh, give you, you know some kind of crasher course or kind of foundation that we can help you certainly so that we yeah. can take care i guess yes yeah, so just add from deacon's perspective absolutely you can come into our business analytics course whether you'd be eligible on this pathway to receive both of the degrees is something that we'd need to discuss as um separate institutions yeah. but absolutely we would still have a pathway um, into the business analytics degree for you that you can come into from your um, BBA that you're currently doing. Yes, because in this, till their second year, they have learned maths, they have learned stats, so these are covered. And then they have, you know, the, uh, you will be learning spreadsheet modeling, data analysis and interpretations. So these are uh, these are the prerequisites. So you can yeah. easily go. Yeah, that's not an yeah, issue. Yeah, and I think I also want to jump on this one because uh, the student said that he's studying acrobatic sciences. So I think he's mm -hmm. referring, I guess, to auditing and accounting. And I think he had a question about whether business analytics goes hands in hands with this. I would say definitely. You know, um, you know, predictive analytics. I would say. Uh, or and, and business analytics in general, uh, we do use techniques and tools that you could use for crunching data and analyzing and interpreting data, um, uh, accounting data, you know, data in financial markets and so on. So yes, it does go hand in hand with business analytics, uh, your, your actual uh, science direction that you're currently doing now in your second year. Yeah. Yeah, actually, does that answer? We don't know. Marketing HR, whatever. At the end, you have to, you know, play with data. It's a data-driven world. So you cannot escape from data and numbers. So that they have to understand, okay? Sure. You can sure. be a HR professional, you can be marketing, you can be finance, wherever you go. You will have to encounter with the data. So if you know the data analytics tools and to how to, you know, analyze the data in a proper way, it will be very much advantageous for you, definitely. So does that answer your question? Was that Uday who was asking this question? Oh, yes. So, so does just that answer one, your question? Uh, so, uh, just one query more. Uh, so how will, like, right now, is this program available for OP general students? I, I'm in second year. Can I go in the next year after post semester? That's what my question was. That's your specific question. I appreciate your question. I think that brought the short answer, Uday, is that in principle, it sounds like that's possible. But mm -hmm. I think the best way to take this forward is take this offline and and follow up a discussion with uh, with with uh, with us and you know and then we will help try and channel you through. Mm -hmm. uh, they will obviously be. Uh, I think it's in principle possible now. How to best you know manage the process yeah, because yeah. there will be some teething it's issues and some that's best to tackle mm -hmm. on a rather than on a webinar like this. It's best to tackle with your specific mm -hmm. instance and. and progress that okay, right but in principle yes all right talk to your doctor yeah. okay so yeah we'll be able to answer all right okay, so yeah. let's let's move on in the interest of time for the webinar that was a great question i hope that that's addressed for you there any other questions any other participants want to uh raise some questions please Please raise your hands or please voice it up. Side. Okay, one point is missing from my side. So if people do not go to Dickens, then the, what is the option? So they will be spending the third year with us also. Yes. And they will have specific analytics courses and electives also, a basket of electives to be offered. So that also available. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for clarifying that, uh, Prof. Yes. So just to be clear, the whilst what we are talking about here is the two plus two pathway, yeah. That's the, you know, the, the, the sort of 
clearly, obviously, that option for those people. But if, but for whatever reason, if for some reason people aren't able to to pursue that pathway, then that's not a dead end. After the two years at JGU, you can complete the third year JGU and get the the JGU degree. One yeah. question that was also there in the text, if we could just tease out, if possible, uh, uh, perhaps Bree, uh, if you could tackle, was I think there was the fee question. Um, so, uh, you know, the fee structure for the first two years would obviously be the JGU fee structure. Mm -hmm. And Bree, if you could just address the, the two year fee structure at Deakin, please, Bree. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, the second, uh, sorry. Yeah, the second two years, I suppose, the back end the when next, you come to Deakin, the next two years, yes. um, you would um, be paying the Deakin fees. They do vary slightly year on year, but they sit roughly around the 30, oh goodness, I'll, I'll double check the exact amount and I'll come back to you, but there's also scholarships available um, on top of that. So depending on what your grades are, we can look at um, scholarship opportunities between 20 to 25% as well on top of our course fees. So I'll just um, double check on the exact one that it currently sits at, but just note that if you are looking at doing your two years first before you come, um, as opposed to being in the BBA currently, the fees may change just slightly, but they would be all paid to Deakin. Right. Yeah. All yeah. right, so I hope that uh, addresses uh, Dr. Ajazu Rehman's uh, Q&A that was, you know, uh, uh, that you'd raised. Uh, if there's any other follow-up questions, please feel free to ask. The, in the meantime, um, um, I'm gonna go to one of the open Q&A questions that's in the text. But attendees, I'd really appreciate if we could get some feedback from you. If there's other questions, if you could raise your hands or pop them in the Q&A, because then we can you know, manage the, the time available. But in the, there was one question about, is there a quota, the number of students that could yeah. go to this program? And maybe if I could address, you know, request both uh, Prof. Devetha and either Brie or Dr. Christian from the Deakin side to address that from the Deakin perspective. So, yeah, do we have right? a cap of the students? Yes, in Deakin, I mean, how many can take? <laughs> yeah, so do you, do you have a take, a view on that, Prof. Vedita, from the JGU side? Do you want to, or do you want to pass that to the Deakin team? Actually, this is the first question. There's a specific amount of number of students that Deakin can take. So that number sh we should have. So if you can specify X number of students, that's X number of students we can select from our side, right? Understood. So let's let's have Brie B take that. Go ahead, Brie. Yeah, sure. So number one, I'll just quickly say that it's 35,800 quickly per year. <laughs> um, and then you get your discount on top of that. So that's to answer the previous question. Now I'll move on to this one. There's no specific cap. Um, so we have been working with JGU to ensure that any student that comes into this pathway, so long as they meet those eligibility requirements to transfer, you can absolutely come on in. So no cap from our side. So, so first of all, I was, I was, I was, I thought you were referring to thirty-five thousand eight hundred as the cap of the student oh. number. Wow. Oh wow. No, <laughs> yeah. I was, I was going to ask Vikram to get off this webinar and go, go start. Working on the admissions no, numbers, but I'm just kidding. We can send all our students. Oh, that, that magical figure. We can send all. I the wonder things. that all my ten years numbers <laughs> coming will be taken over there. And what an interesting number to choose as the cap. Yeah, <laughs> all of them provided they will pass our second year with us, right? But in, <laughs> but in all okay. seriousness, in all seriousness, oh. just to clarify, yep, that, that was the fees. You do for, not call uh, Aussie fees. Aussie dollars. Uh, per year, that's the tuition component, yeah. and the cost of living is is separate. Exactly. On top of that, but uh, but as far as the 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 point that Bree was making, and that I think the spirit and philosophy on both partners' side is, this is a quality bar driven uh, process, not a capacity constrained process. So nice. as many of you that can meet the standards of both institutions, all power to all of us. And, you know, uh, we would, you know, embrace everyone that can meet the bar. With all 35,800 of you. <laughs> I have another point. I have another point, Professor Gandog, if you can. Yes, please, please, please. Uh, to the students for the first two years, I forgot to mention about the internships. This is our very, very integral part in JGVS. So after first year, we will 
going for one internship and after the second year also we'll be completing one internship before going to Dickens. So there'll be two internships Great. after Great. each year. Yeah. Great. 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 Any other questions from our attendees uh, or uh, please any other burning questions? Uh, I know we're a little bit over time. Um, yeah, but I think it is a very important session we all have done today and all the questions which have been taken up are quite important from the students perspective to understand and I hopefully find that many of the students won't hesitate to understand the nuances and I think if there are no questions we can wrap up the session because for both the professors from abroad it's quite late what I think I think we have one more question. Uday's had his hand up for quite some time, so okay. just checking with you. Do you have some question? You may please unmute yourself. Uh, uh, hi, I'm Pranidip. I had a question. Go ahead. So I'm a first year BBA student, and if I want to join this course, the two plus two pathway, uh, will there be any course modification for me in the second year so that I can follow that? Yeah, that is in the third year. Question. Yeah, specialized internal questions. So you are uh, advised to consult Professor Chitra Kalpasen again. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Nice. So we are working on the tuition fees and the residential things and everything. And students, we will get back to you. The very important thing as of now was to understand the curriculum between both the institutions, how it will synergize. And uh, why Deacon? Most important, this question was asked by one of the parents. Yeah. So among all the international collaborations you had, why did you chose Deacon? Yeah. <laughs> so I feel we have kicked off the first session very well today. And going forward, we would be hosting similar kind of sessions where we would also plan to invite some of the existing students of Deacon University who would come and share their campus life experiences. Would it good. would help you right yeah. now sitting in India to see what life at Deakin is all about right. in terms of safety, security, everything. Things will follow. Keep chasing us. Keep connected with us. That is what as the director of admissions, I would pass on my message Absolutely. to everyone. And That's wonderful if the students can share their experiences. Yeah. Absolutely. Actually, Vikram, I had, when we planned this session originally, I had offered that given that I'm still in Melbourne, I had actually originally offered that we would do this live uh, from the Burwood campus. But then, you know, given the time slot you wanted, I don't think the security guards at Deacon Burwood would be very happy for us to be there at past midnight. But <laughs> that's but, a fantastic but, idea, Professor but, uh, I think next time we can have all yeah. three of you from the Deacon campus somewhere in the open lawns or in the library yeah. and that can add more excitement towards the session. Yeah. Yes, we would be happy to. We'd be happy to that do that. It's a very, it's a very nice campus. Yeah. Uh, and we'd be happy to, to share that perspective. And uh, I think if you could just, uh, I think as you rightly said, Vikram, in this session, uh, I think thanks to the excellent presentations that, uh, you know, uh, Bree and, um, uh, Dr. Chris John had uh, Professor Nivedita have done. We've clearly laid out fairly fact-based answers for why business analytics, what is it business analytics, how is that you know related but distinct from data science, mm -hmm. what are the career opportunities, and how sustainable a trend that appears to be. It doesn't appear to just be a flash in the pan. Uh, and also very clearly the you know in in Bree and Dr. Christian's presentations the why Deacon the Deacon advantage the you know why why we're delighted to have uh, them as a partner I think those have been very clearly addressed uh, and we'd be very happy to take on more specific um, you know uh, student life and other uh, questions uh, so why don't we wrap it up here Let me thank all of our panelists uh, and uh, the you know entire team, Vikram, as well as Vaibhav and Priyanka and all of the team members at Deakin to put together this, uh, this event. Hopefully this can be uh, you know, amplified, et cetera. And we would be more than happy, uh, Vaibhav and Priyanka and um, Vikram to you know, host other, other such uh, information and other, other ways that we can help our interested uh, 
students and their parents understand this opportunity. All the best. Thank you very much. Good thank you. thank you. Finally, I would also like to thank take you. this opportunity to sure. thank sure, uh, Professor ahead. Gandok and and also Bikram uh, for for all the support that they have given throughout this uh, and and for making this possible. Thank you so much, Dr. Krishnan and uh, Bri, uh, for your time. And we hope we see good numbers coming uh, from JGU for this program. All the best. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. It was our pleasure. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thanks Bye. for all the who have joined us. And it was a pleasure talking to all of you, the guests, the students. And we would be sharing the recording session with you very soon. So if in case you have missed anything, the recording would be there with all of you. I think by latest by Monday or Tuesday. Have a happy weekend to all of you and enjoy your Saturdays and Sundays. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.